lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Jacob, one of the believers had the question based on Hebrews 13, 2, can angels actually appear as human beings? And if they can, can fallen angels appear as demonic manifestations? Fallen angels are demons. Demons are fallen angels. They have demonic power. They have the same power as other angels. And they can do the things other angels can do when God allows it. Angels that are not fallen, that are the messengers of God, can and do appear in human form, as we read here in Hebrews. We may have encountered angels and not known they were angels. It's possible. Uh, we see that when Jesus rose from the dead, the angels who were in the garden were seen and perceived to be men. There are other accounts. Absolutely angels can appear in human form. Demons, however, normally... Not always, but normally manifest their presence in human form through possession of a person, through demonic possession. They animate a person whom they possessed. They enter their spirit and animate them in a counterfeit of being filled with the Holy Spirit and even take over their mind and emotions and body to a degree. <coughs> this is normally how demons operate, as we see with the demoniacs at Gensarine, for instance, in John 5 and so forth. This is the norm. Satan <coughs> will satanically possess the Antichrist. Uh, again, <coughs> sorry, Satan will satanically possess the Antichrist. Again, they usually use the surrogate vehicle of possession as opposed to appearing as a man. However, we are told in the Epistle to Jude, something also referred to in the apocryphal literature, that angels left their rightful abode. These were fallen angels who procreated with human women, somehow bringing about the biological reality of demonoids. Now, this is what precipitated God's final judgment in the days of Noah, according to the book of Genesis. When we read Genesis chapter 6 and 7 and so forth. But we're told by Jesus the last days will be emphatically just as in the days of Noah. We explain this in considerable length in the book Shadows of the Beast. Somehow what happened in the days of Noah will be recapitulated in the last days. We will see the reality of a physical manifestation of the demonic, ultimately. Now, I've been warning for well over 20 years that anything fallen man can use for evil, he will. We can use radioactive isotopes oncologically to fight cancer, but we can also use them for weapons of mass destruction. We live in a fallen world. Satan's the god of this world, and anything that fallen man can use for evil, he will. That includes biogenetic engineering and cloning. I like the idea that you can take some pancreatic tissue that's healthy from someone, that's their own tissue, that is not going to have a rejection factor, culture it in a lab, cloning their own tissue, and then surgically implant it into them as healthy pancreatic tissue curing diabetes, hypothetically. It's been talked about. Great idea! 
But that same technology and science can and will be used for evil. I've been warning for years, and I mean over 20 years, a time is going to come when people will attempt to use cloning of DNA to, by biogenetic engineering, facilitate reincarnation, thinking that it's the reincarnated person. There will be a demonic element in this. The question is, where are manufactured people going to get their spirits? The prospects are rather, again, apocalyptic. I would refer you to the book Shadows of the Beast. But the answer is yes, but we must qualify the answer. And we must understand it, both from the perspective of angelology and demonology, but also from the perspective of eschatology and end-time prophecy. Hence, I'll point you to the book. It's a long subject. But basically, if angels can do it, when God allows, fallen angels can do it. And there has been at least one major episode where it happened. According to Jewish history, this transpired on Mount Hermon which was the Mount of Transfiguration of Jesus with Moses and Elijah uh, in the days of Jared, in the days of Jared, according to Jewish history. In any event, I refer you to the book, but it is a very good and a very important question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube, deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea. It's an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture. The snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo. All available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.